as a man on a mission, I am constantly on the move. My work takes me to different places from all walks of life. In the process of time, I have met many successful people with different backgrounds and with different drives. One thing has been common among them all. Like me, they don't compromise on quality. Which is why each day as I leave home to face the world, I drive straight to the one place I know I can reach you over today because I am assured of quality fuel at an affordable price. <laughs> no more! Oh, there at Santo, quality is affordable. At Santo Energy, quality is affordable. Clean for all, friendly service. I'm Leslie Arthur Esiru. Ten years of oil production in Ghana. The Talo story. What better person to tell the story than the MD of Talo Oil? Wissam Al Monthiri. Hello, Wissam. Akwaba, Leslie. Okay, so we'd like to know about you first. Of course, Leslie. I've been fortunate enough to be in this role as MD for Talo Ghana for almost 20 years now oil and gas professional my whole career, starting as an engineer and working around the world, primarily in offshore uh, oil and gas, okay. uh, and sp having spent a long career uh, with BP prior to ultimately joining Tello last year. Okay, okay. So you, you haven't had any prior experience in Africa? I have actually. Um, I, n n I have not been fortunate enough to work in West Africa, but I did work quite extensively in North Africa prior okay. to this, okay. uh, where I played a leadership role in the business in North Africa. Uh, but this is my first uh, full-time experience in West Africa, and it's been an absolute pleasure to work in Ghana. Okay. Welcome again to Ghana. Thank you, Leslie. Okay. So it's been 10 years since we commercially started producing oil in Ghana. What has been the experience for Talo? Well, it's had lots of challenges, but it's also been very rewarding. We've been uh, really privileged to play a role as the operator of the Ten and Jubilee fields, initially coming in uh, to Ghana in 2006. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jubilee and Ten have been very challenging projects, and we've certainly had our setbacks along the way. Of course, yeah. But when you look where we are today and you look back 10 years, we're very proud to have had a significant impact on the economy of Ghana in a mm -hmm. positive manner, okay. both in terms of uh, oil and gas revenues and contributions to the economy, mm -hmm. but also in, uh, in terms of uh, our, our contribution to growing the supply chain and the sector and creating jobs yeah. uh, and creating a future in this really bright industry as a pioneer of the industry in yeah. Ghana. Okay, so if what do you say you've had the necessary support from various agencies, governments, or all through? Support has been essential over the last 10 years, and it's been very present. It, I would be remiss not to mention the support we've had over the years from the Ministry of Energy, okay. Ministries of Trade, Education, certainly the national oil companies in GMPC and, and more recently with GNGC, okay. and the list goes on and on. But the government of Ghana and our partners uh, in the Jubilee and Ten Fields have been essential contributors to the success over the last 10 years. Okay, so support has been great, but has there been any challenges at all? Any journey in oil and gas is full of challenges. So to mention a couple, certainly the drilling moratorium between 2015 and 2017 okay. is a notable one that affected us. And then the turret failure on Jubilee, uh, also in the, in the mid-2000s, mm -hmm. was a significant impact to our operations. I'm very proud of how we've come together, or we did come together, 
uh, and overcome those challenges, mm -hmm. both technically, commercially, and with the support of the government of Ghana. Okay, that's great. So can you tell us about your operational structure? Regarding our operational structure, we of course have the two floating production storage vessels offshore, JAM and KNK, representing the 10 and Jubilee fields. Okay. They have teams that work on the FPSOs 24-7. Uh, supporting them, we have both technical and support logistics staff in Takaradi okay. and, of course, here in Accra. And then back here in Accra, we have the, the next line of functional support, be it corporate, legal, commercial, mm -hmm. and I include myself in that, whose job it is to make sure we get obstacles out of the way for the teams to carry out operations safely and efficiently mm -hmm. every day. Okay. Energy Quest has great interest in women and girls development. So do you employ a lot of women, both in your technical fields and then in your offices altogether? So typically in the field, the numbers tend to be lower in terms of women. There's various numbers uh, on that. We strive at Tullow to increase that. Okay. However, we're very proud that as you get to those next lines of support in Takaradi, in Accra, uh, we, we, we achieve very good ratios and very equitable ratios of male to female in terms of staff. Okay. Uh, at Tullow and in the oil and gas industry provides very exciting opportunities for females uh, that make a huge difference in what we do day to day. Mm -hmm. The reality is diversity and gender diversity makes mm -hmm. a significant difference in how we perform as a company. And yeah. I've seen it and we've seen it and that will continue at Tullow. That, that's really good. What of local content? Do you have a um, lot of locals employed in Tello? We do, absolutely, Leslie. Local content is, to me and us, not just part of our license to operate, but it's also part of what differentiates us in terms of performance. Okay. Over the last 10 years, we've grown our local content, both in terms of our staff and Ghanaian staff participation, okay. as well as through our supply chain and we've contributed significantly to growing the supply chain in Ghana. We've seen an immediate impact to our positive performance over the years mm -hmm. uh, because the reality is knowledge of businesses and knowledge of the country makes a very big difference yeah, in how you very operate. Much. And we've seen that significantly. Okay. Uh, we've, uh, as, an, as a simple example, over the last 10 years, or in the period between tw 2010 and 2020, mm -hmm. uh, Tello Ghana and its partners have given out about uh, $16 billion worth oh. of contracts. Okay. Around 11 of those have had local company participation, 11 billion of those. That's, that's really so, good. So, you know, over 65%. And I only see that number going up as the local supply chain develops further. Mm -hmm. And we have a, lo a lot of very strong companies in, in very complex technical sectors mm -hmm. as well as non-technical sectors contributing to the success of the operations. Okay, so as you're growing these auxiliary businesses by giving them contracts, what about the communities in which your business is, where the production is, the western region? Our contribution to the community has always been a priority and will continue to be. Some simple examples for us have been the contribution to uh, technical training in uh, in the Takaradi area. Okay. The Jubilee Technical Training Center is something we set up in conjunction with our partners, uh, handed over to, to be run as a place not just to support creating potential staff for Tello, but mm -hmm. also for the industry uh, as a whole. On top of that, uh, or from it, the, the, there's been $6 billion of revenues uh, provided to the government of Ghana in the form of entitlements, mm -hmm. taxes, royalties. Uh, and and that, that's a number, both those numbers are numbers we're very proud of, because not because of the dollar value they represent, but yeah. because of the jobs they've created. Changing the, lives. The, the lives they've changed and the growth in the economy they've created in Ghana. We're, we're extremely proud of that and we, we, we know that that will continue. Okay, okay. So specifically, which industries have benefited? Well, uh, you could think about which industries have benefited in a number of ways. So the first, of course, the direct service industries to, the oil, to oil and gas have benefited significantly. 
uh, our business requires a lot of logistical support. So you look at marine providers, helicopter providers, mm -hmm. uh, bases around Takaradi in the western region. Mm -hmm. So a lot of land impact uh, has benefited a great deal. Trucking, uh, another area of logistics that has benefited a great okay. deal. And then you go to quite a bit more technical areas uh, where uh, a number of Ghanaian companies have stepped in learned the trade, be it in the drilling space, in the drilling material space, be it in the production operations space. Okay. Uh, it's grown industries and grown local companies mm -hmm. that are core partners of ours for the future. So some of these local companies have indigents working there, right? As in um, strategically developing local people within the community to be part of these. That's correct, Leslie. So we measure ourselves not just with the consideration of what local companies we have, but we actually also, as a subset of that, measure indigenous company participation. And okay. we challenge ourselves to think beyond joint ventures, which is you know international companies coming in and partnering with, Ghana, with local companies, which we do a lot of, and mm -hmm. that's good. But in addition to that, we very much target the development of indigenous companies where we can partner with them directly as a supplier okay. without the need for an international joint venture. That's, that's really good. So, I mean, um, you've, you've done so much in the past 10 years. Very impressive. I think Ghana has really benefited and we're grateful. You're working together to, for, for the mutual benefit of our country and then of your business. Um, in the next 10 years, what are your plans for the development of the ten and the Jubilee assets? Well, the future is really exciting and the best is yet to come. Okay. So, uh, back at the end of 2020, Tullo an announced uh, a ten-year investment program for in Ghana, where we, are, we as a company are very much refocusing our forward investment program on Ghana. Okay. Uh, affectionately called the Ghana Value Maximization Plan. Our intent is to take what we feel is over 550 million barrels of oil still remaining in the mm -hmm. Jubilee in 10 fields and only known, only discovered 550. So th there's a potential that number could be bigger. Mom, much more. Mm -hmm. and, and invest in it so that we make that oil and gas available okay. for production in the next 10 years. Uh, when all is said and done, we're targeting about a $4.4 billion investment program alongside okay. our partners. And so uh, that'll be distributed across, the, of course, the appropriate partnerships and the government of Ghana will be a significant beneficiary. Most importantly, that's more jobs to be created. Yeah. That's more su suppliers to, to contribute mm -hmm. and grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, hopefully, much more significant positive contribution to the communities. Okay, I look forward to that. We feel there's over 550 million barrels of oil in place to produce on Jubilee in 10. With that investment comes the criticality of community involvement. and. A big component of that for us is uh, what we've done to provide $10 million for free senior high school oh. over, over a five-year period. And that's, that's already started, actually, and will continue through this 10-year yeah, investment That's a big program. one. I'm very passionate about education, and at Tullo we are as well, because we know that education is really the heartbeat of growth for any economy in any country, and we're proud to be a small contributor to that. Okay, and then I know you've done other... Um, investments in education. What's, what others have you done beyond the free SHS? So apart from senior high school support, we believe education starts right at the beginning and yeah. we're big supporters of education from kindergarten through to tertiary. Okay. Uh, a good example is the uh, opening with our support of 12 separate kindergartens uh, and as part of a program that will continue. We're big supporters and fans of uh, STEM, education. Uh, STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We believe that priority placed on it will create the opportunity for people in the future across those four sectors okay. or four subsectors, which will undoubtedly be part of the future of not just Ghana, but the world as a whole. Yeah, I hope in that STEM education, you are focusing on the ladies as well, getting the girls more involved. As I said prior, uh, Leslie, 
we believe diversity is a major component of success in any industry, in any corporation, in mm -hmm. any organization. Okay. So this is uh, gender diversity is a big component of that. W w our hiring policies extend to our investment policies and community okay. support. Okay, okay. Okay, so as we well know, the oil industry and the environment, there's always some, some relationship. How is um, TALO um, working on mitigating some of the effects that the oil has on the environment? Well, we believe that responsible production of oil and gas is essential to whatever we do. Mm -hmm. And a big part of responsible production is environmental stewardship. Yeah. We appreciate and understand that our operations have a tangible footprint on okay. uh, the environment and therefore doing them and carrying them out in the least impactful way is critical to us. Okay. So as an example, work we do over time to minimize emissions from our operations mm -hmm. is a significant focus front. This is not just visible emissions, things like flaring, but also fugitive emissions and methane emissions. Okay. These are things that people don't perhaps appreciate or understand the impact of, but it's significant. So okay. we believe that it's key that we put in time, effort, and technology and investment into reducing the impact of emissions. Waste is another significant part of our environmental footprint, so mm -hmm. focus attention and also investment on minimizing, reducing, and recycling waste uh, is a critical part of our operation. And then we try to start to look uh, through the value chain. It's not mm -hmm. just about what Tullo does, okay. but it's about what our partners do, it's what about our contractors All do, together. and we influence them, and that comes into our decisions of who or who, or who not to hire as a supplier. Okay. And I think that's going to grow over the next 10 years, absolutely, where choices will be made based on environmental stewardship of who yeah. to work with. That's, that's really good. So, um, the import of LNG into the country, will that force um, Tallow to go back to doing some gas flaring? What, what's the effect that this import is going to have on your production? Well, I think, Leslie, the gas mix and gas story is a very interesting one, and we could probably spend a lot more time on it. But I think we at Tallow, and as in, I think as, as, the, as the, the industry here, of course, respect the right of the country to diversify its sources of gas. Mm -hmm. Gas is very connected to power and mm -hmm. manufacturing, yeah. and therefore I, we all appreciate and understand the need for the country to ensure it has sufficient supply to fuel the future demand. Okay. Having said that, when we look at uh, the gas mix in the country, and most importantly, the availability of gas domestically, locally grown, locally resourced gas, we feel that, that those volumes and those quantities far exceed or satisfy or even exceed the current needs of the country. Okay. So our, our concern coming from importing any other forms of gas, LNG or, or otherwise, would be that you end up in a situation where it competes against uh, existing domestic resources mm -hmm. and has the risk, and we hope it never comes to this and we are working with the government of Ghana on it, but does pose the risk of leaving resources stranded yeah. in favor of imported resources. Mm -hmm. And further to that simple kind of thought is, we believe that domestic gas and certainly Jubilee and 10 gas provides yeah. by far the lowest cost option for the government of yeah. Ghana. Yeah. As you know, as part of the uh, Jubilee agreement, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Jubilee field and Tullo and its partners have provided uh, a significant amount of um, free gas yeah. called foundation gas, mm -hmm. 145 billion standard cubic okay. feet of gas provided to date mm -hmm. uh, and another 45 to go uh, before that agreement runs out. That gas has come free of charge. And free? It, it, that's always been the agreement and, okay. uh, and we, we of course must honor it. Not, not, uh, not only that, uh, it, it obviously there's more gas available but in addition to that, it supports oil production. Mm -hmm. So our, our gas is associated with the oil yes, production on Jubilee. So the more gas taken and the more gas uh, off taken by the government of Ghana 
in the, in the, through GMPC mm -hmm. and GNGC, the greater oil production grows. And it also unlocks the door for further investment, as I talked about mm -hmm. with the value maximization mm -hmm. plan. So the gas story is an important one, and I'll just come back to saying we're working closely with the government of Ghana to ensure the right choices are made for yeah. the country. So how is it going to affect the future of domestic gas upstream? Well, I think at Tello, we, we similarly believe that oil and gas is going to be with us for the foreseeable future and probably beyond that. And there's many reasons for that. So, but having said that, we believe strongly that for an oil and gas company to be competitive in the future, we have to have a plan around the energy transition. Yeah. A big component of that is our environmental stewardship. I and we firmly believe that the lowest carbon footprint oil and gas will be the one that is produced for the years to come mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. And we want to represent that as Tello. So I, I, uh, the things we're doing around reducing emissions, our net zero commitment as a company okay. by 2030, our plan and commitment to eliminate any kind of routine flaring by 2025, mm -hmm. and everything I talked about with regard to uh, recycling programs, material waste reduction programs, okay. all of them form a significant part of our energy transition. Okay, so the, the CEO of Baker Hughes has indicated that there's no point where we would have a complete um, neglect of fossil fuels. However, they are prepared for the energy transition. So what is Talo also doing? Well, I think at Tello, we, we similarly believe that oil and gas is going to be with us for the foreseeable future and probably beyond that. And there's many reasons for that. So, but having said that, we believe strongly that for an oil and gas company to be competitive in the future, we have to have a plan around the energy transition. Yeah. A big component of that is our environmental stewardship. I and we firmly believe that the lowest carbon footprint oil and gas will be the one that is produced for the years to come mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. And we want to represent that as Tello. So I, I, uh, the things we're doing around reducing emissions, our net zero commitment as a company okay. by 2030, our plan and commitment to eliminate any kind of routine flaring by 2025, mm -hmm. and everything I talked about with regard to uh, recycling programs, material waste reduction programs, okay. all of them form a significant part of our energy transition. Gas is actually another significant part of our uh, energy transition plan. Mm, okay. Gas is a lower carbon footprint uh, resource than oil. It powers the, the power sector and mm -hmm. manufacturing sector significantly. Yeah. The grid in Ghana, for example, is set up to take more Very natural gas and dependent on it rather than primarily only being dependent on mm, things oil. like oil or even coal. Mm -hmm. So we, our energy transition plan has us contributing and increasing that contribution from gas, both what we know is there today in Jubilee in 10 as mm -hmm. associated gas, and our belief and no known belief of the existence of further unassociated gas within Jubilee and 10. So that's a significant part of our energy transition plan. Okay. I would just want to finally mention that no energy transition plan is complete without the concept of offsets. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like a technical term, but in reality what it is is contributions to the environment, the planting okay. of trees, mm -hmm. the establishment of... Uh, resources in the ground that yeah. improve the environment as an additional component to offsetting carbon footprint and emissions. emissions yeah. And at Tello, we will be announcing and test talking more about what, what we're going to do in that space. Our okay. commitment is to focus on the communities and countries mm -hmm. that we work in in doing that. Uh, and you'll hear more from on that from us. Okay, okay. So this tells me that Tello will be here for a long time. I certainly hope so. I okay. think uh, when you marry the the long time that Tullo's th the initial risk that Tullo and belief Tullo had in Ghana, with this with the success, sure with some ups and downs, but with success overall, uh, and the growth of the country, the demographics, mm -hmm. the growth of the sector, the growth of the manufacturing sector, the growth of the power sector, mm -hmm. uh, we believe we're in a very good position to be here for a very long time. And 
to, to add to that, sentiment is one thing, but action is most important. Yeah. And hopefully, uh, with the announcement of the value maximization plan, the 10-year mm -hmm. investment program, the start of the 10-year investment program now with the, with the uh, procurement and start of another drilling campaign offshore in 10 and Jubilee, uh, those are visible signs that we are intending to be here for the long term uh, and see a lot of promise in the country of Ghana. Great. So you're going to be here for a long time. So, so much is going to, um, you, sh you should have great interest in the future here. So if you have the opportunity to advise the government on the future of the industry, what are you going to tell them? <laughs> well, it's not my place to advise the government, Leslie, but as, a, as an international investor, uh, what, what you could look at is in any, in any country and any investor would look for a, a few things uh, to, to feel comfortable about the future. One is the commitment and s of, of the revenues being secured and available. And yeah. we talked about gas. Gas is very important because our oil comes with gas in it, mm -hmm. with it, and if that gas doesn't have a home, then that oil can't then be he, produced. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And if that oil can't be produced, then we're unlikely to want to, or anyone would be unlikely to want to invest further in it. Okay. So there's something in the space of uh, transparency and uh, commitment around gas that is a significant area. And at Tullow, we're working very closely with the government to not just to help define what the right transparency is and also what the right contractual commitment should be to okay. further greater investment. Another area is, is fiscal stability. And, um, and any investor will tell you this. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what terms and conditions you have in your investment agreements, you'd like to see those upheld going forward. Not because they're necessarily good terms, but they're because they're terms familiar to you. And I think you know, that's another area. The, the idea of fiscal stability and uh, regulatory stability okay. are key areas of, of importance of to course, us. Yeah. And then just to hit back on the theme of growth, uh, and to get a bit more specific, as an example, Jubilee and 10 have a lot of very interesting and exciting fields in and around them okay. that could add oil production and gas production. Okay. Uh, our access to those fields uh, and ability to access them with, uh, with favorable terms, mm -hmm. uh, consistent with what we have today it is another big really area that any you. investor because the reality is the more familiar those terms are uh, the more likely we're qu we are to quickly invest and any investor would say the same well thank you yes so Wizam, we are especially interested in your drive on community development and also your efforts in stem development with the girls and we also have great interest in you employing more and more women into Talo and into the industry. So we'll revisit that. Thank you very much. Leslie, as I said, it's a priority for us and you're always welcome. So this is what we do on Energy Quest. We demystify the energy sector and add value. Till we meet again. Ciao.